Hello, how are you doing? Uh, my name is Keith and today I'm so much excited to speak about a very important topic. Are there apostles today? Do we have apostles today? Uh, many people claim that they are apostle. I'm apostle this, I'm apostle that. Just check on Facebook, on Instagram or this and that, social media. People are saying, I'm apostle this and I'm apostle that. Do we still have apostles today? I also see others calling themselves reverend, you know, right reverend, this and that. Do you know reverend is a name given to God? <laughs> If you check Psalms 111 verse 9, the Bible says, He sent redemption unto his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. So if reverend is the name of God, it's like waking up and saying, Hey, I'll call myself Jehovah. <laughs> Can you call yourself? You see, these kind of names, you have to be very careful when you're calling yourself a name and you don't know the meaning or you don't know exactly who it was for you just say hey i think i'm anointed i can call myself apostle i can call myself reverend i can call myself you know this and that names have meanings okay so we see uh the word apostle appears in the bible about 19 times in the king james version and also the word apostles with uh, s appears about 60 times in the king james version so we have a total of 79 times that we hear the word apostle or apostles, okay? So should you use the term or title apostle? The book of uh, Luke, Luke 6, 12 to 16, tells us about the apostles, who they were. This is Jesus. Uh, the first time we hear about the apostles is Jesus mentioning them. So we hear, the Bible says, And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. And when it was day, he called unto him his disciples, and, and of them he chose twelve, whom he also named apostles. So we see the disciples were also named. We see the disciples. Uh, let me use, uh, I don't know where my pen's gone. So the apostles, just give me a second. Let me pick my pen here. So literally, um, the apostles were also called disciples. Disciples. Uh, disciples were also called apostles. All right. So if apostles are also called disciples, then are we getting something? These were literally chosen by Jesus. Simon, now verse 14, Simon, whom he also named Peter, and Andrew his brother, James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, uh, Matthew and Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon called Zelotes, and Judas the brother of James, and Judas Iscariot, which also was the traitor. So we also, in these apostles, we had also traitors, deceivers, people who are, someone who was uh, not a true apostle, he was just a liar. Do we also have people who are liars, who are just lying to people? And then we see something that uh, Jesus himself, he came for Jews. His apostles also were Jews and they were also sent to the Jews only. We see Jesus sent them to the Jews. So Jesus, Jesus was a, a Jew. He was a Jew. Then apostles they were also Jews, and then they were sent to Jews. So if the apostles were sent to the Jews, then do we have apostles today, the time and uh, this time and age where we are Gentiles? <laughs> Let's see this. Matthew 10, 5. Those, these twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. And into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So these people, they were going to the Jews and they were preaching the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven. That was their message. All right. This is the message. They were told, hey, your message will be the kingdom of heaven. Which is the kingdom of heaven? That is the millennial kingdom is at hand. They were told, Jesus, he, is the, he, 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 he was uh, the Messiah at that time. So he was saying, hey, I want to start uh, the kingdom of heaven here. I want to start the millennial kingdom now to the Jews. Because I came from the prophecies which you heard from your fathers that 
a king is going to come. So I am your king. So Jesus was depicted here as the Messiah. All right. So it was all about the Messiah. All right. So Jesus as the Messiah. So is this the same message that we preach today that Jesus is the Messiah? No. Today we don't preach the message of the kingdom. We preach the message of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So these are different a gospel, this is a gospel of the kingdom, which was given to the Jews and the apostles and all that. So the apostles were told that they could be given power to perform miracles. Okay? So there are a number of miracles that they were to do. Verse 8, they were told, heal the sick. Uh, verse 8, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. So these are the miracles that they could be able to do. So they, there were a number of miracles. So these are miracles. So miracles are also called signs. They had a number of miracles and signs. So number one was uh, they could be able to heal the sick. Heal the sick. Uh huh. Number two, we have uh, cleanse lepers. Cleanse lepers. Number three, they could be able to raise the dead. Raise the dead. Number four, they could also be able to cast out devils. Cast out. Cast out devils. So they could be able to cast out devils or demons. So those are some of the things that they could be able to do. Do people today... Do this. We see some people trying to say they can heal the sick. They can cleanse this and that. They can raise the dead. But <laughs> is it really true? Cast out devils. Is it really true? You see, we also see so many people today trying to sell miracles. Is, is the gospel of God of, for sale? You see people, I'm selling you anointing oil. I'm selling you this and that. I'm selling you this and that. You know, you have to buy this. You have, when you go home, you will do this. You see, just, just the same way there was a fake apostle, <laughs> I think they're also fakes today. They're also fakes. People who are just saying, hey, I can do this and that, especially those many, many healing ministries, um, this healing ministry of this and that. You have to be very careful with these healing things because these miracles, as we are seeing, they were for the apostles. And we will see who these apostles were and who exactly they were and where and when and even when their time frame was still when. We are going to see. Verse 9. Provide neither gold nor silver or brass in your purses, nor sip a script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes nor yet staves, for the workman is worthy of his meat. And uh, into... And into whatsoever city or town you shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and there abide till you go thence. So he's saying, don't even care about gold or silver, or even carry two coats or shoes. Or it, Today's apostles that we are seeing, do they do that? Or do they care so much about money, gold and silver? Or do they care, hey, all the time, this is my M-Pesa line, this is my bank account, hey, send me money here, send us money. Send. Even Apostle Paul, <laughs> he was an apostle, yes. But we see, he says, uh, guys, I work for my money because I don't want to be a burden to you. Do you collect money from people? You're an apostle and you have... Jesus has given you direction. He has told you, don't ask for money, gold, silver. Don't even do this and that. Don't even carry two coats. Just go by faith. Do they really go by faith, today's apostles? So apostles were Jews, sent to Jews, given power to do great miracles. So God, Jesus had given them a lot of power to do great things. Let's see, Luke 9.1. The Bible says, then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. So they had a lot of power. Themselves, they had power. They could be able to lay hand on someone and then someone is healed, raise the dead, do all the... Today we have corona. We have all this happening. Is there one guy who can wake up and say, now <laughs> I'm going to that, you know, ICU for corona guys and I'm just laying hands on them. They will run. They will not do that. So do we really have these apostles? 
Can, do you see somebody who can go to the morgue and just say, where are those people who are dead and go raising them up? Do we see that today? These guys who say they will raise the dead, uh, most of them are just fakes. They're just fakes. The apostles had signs, but what were those signs for? What are signs for? Why did, why did Jesus give them these signs? What are signs for? The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 1.22, it says, for the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. So Jews, <laughs> Jews require a sign. Jews require a sign. But Greeks or Gentiles seek after wisdom. So you see a difference? So the signs were for Jews. So Jews really loved the signs. Actually, we see signs started from way back. In the time of Moses, there were still signs. You see, Moses was sent by God, and then he said, How will these people believe me? He was told, put your hand here. When you take it out, it is leprous. If you take it back, it becomes whole. You see, uh, you know, put, put down your, your rod. It becomes a snake, and then take it back. It's not a, Go and show them those signs. Even when they were coming out from uh, Egypt to Canaan, uh, during the day there was a sign, there was a, a, a cloud. And during the night there was a pillar of fire. So these guys loved the signs. <laughs> signs were for Jews. But Gentiles, do we really love signs? Do we walk on signs? Second Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. So wisdom is also faith here. We also walk by faith. The Gentiles... They also walk by faith. So we are more faith than... So if, if, if you, you have these signs, you must be a Jew. You must be dealing with Jews. That is number one. You have to be very... You must be a Jew dealing with Jews because all the apostles you have seen, they were Jews sent to Jews. So if you are an apostle, you have to be a Jew and you have to be dealing with Jews because the, the Jews who require signs. All right? Also, we see... Uh, even the Bible tells us, tongues were for a sign. You remember during the time of uh, the upper room, during the day of Pentecost, these guys were speaking in tongues, the apostles. And then people came and said, wow, they're speaking in our own languages, in our own tongues. The wonderful works of God. You see, these people are speaking a written and spoken language. Not the babbling that this, most of these Pentecostal churches do. They were speaking in tongues, real tongues, real words. And the Bible says, what are tongues for? <laughs> tongues, what are they for? In 1 Corinthians 14, 22, the Bible says, Wherefore, tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serve it not for them that believe not, but to them which believe. So if signs, if speaking in tongues, are for those who don't believe. You see, that's... Let me, let me, okay. I will, I will write it down here later on. Eh? There, are other, there are other few uh, miracles that they were given. Also, Speaking in tongues is there. I'll write it later on. But now we see, if tongues are for a sign, then, <laughs> and it's for those who don't believe, then these other fakes who keep on saying, hey, I'm doing all this and this and this, and what's the reason? What's the need? What's the need? Paul actually says, I speak in tongues more than you, but I rather speak five words in a known language which can edify the church, than speak 10,000 words in, in a language that nobody can understand, nobody can be. Go and read uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 14. It's all about the whole issue of tongues, and you'll be able to understand. Even tongues have, they have rules. It's not just speaking in tongues, just saying, bah, 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 bah. you have to have a translator, and there must be two or three translators so that you don't lie and just come with your guy and say this what. No, you have to have translator. You there's so much, there are so many rules in the Bible about tongues. So these other guys are just bubble, bubble, bubble. When the Bible says, if, um, if someone who is an unbeliever comes into the church and hears you speaking in tongues, all of you in the church, will they not think that you're mad? That's, that's the Bible. It's what it says. Go and read uh, 1 Corinthians 14. Go and read very well the whole of chapter 14 talking about tongues. You can be able to understand. So what people do today, most of them are fakes. Uh, apostles received power and they were witnesses of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. In Acts 1.8, the Bible says, But you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is where? Jews. In all Judea, Jews. Samaria. They're also a mixture of Jews and 
you see Samarians were like Gentiles married to the uh, to the Jews, so they were still partly uh, Jews, and unto the uttermost part of their so. M- these guys were sent more go to the Jews. Jew, Jesus was all about go to the Jews, Jews, Jews. And we see, you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you shall be witnesses. So we already understand that these apostles, they were witnesses. All right? So they were witnesses. So how do you witness if you have not seen something? Today's apostles, what are they witnessed? If you're witnessing, you must have seen something. Hey, I'm an eyewitness. I saw this happening. So what were they witnessing? The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Hey, I saw Jesus before he was killed. I saw him killed, and then I saw him resurrect. I know he's true. He's truly the, the, the son of God. That was the work of the apostles. So if we have apostles today, what are they witnessed? Is there anyone who has lived 2,000 years? Because right now it's almost 2,000 years later. Is there anyone who has lived 2,000 years? You understand? You see? So it's, you have to be very careful about that. So the apostles, intending to replace Judas, they cast out lots to choose a, a new apostle. That is, they chose Matthias. But the Bible named him with the 11. It just said, and uh, Matthias was named with the 11. It doesn't say he became the 12th apostle. Are you seeing something there? And also, he never, uh, the Bible never mentions again Matthias all through the Bible after he was chosen. We never hear he, about him again. So, did God really accept Matthias or did he have a different choice in mind? You see, these guys just cast out lots. They said, okay. Uh, God, please, we want to choose uh, someone here. So after that, they cast out lots. That, does God deal with casting lots? It's like lottery. Does God deal with gambling? Mm-hmm, I don't think so. Let's just read what happened in uh, Acts, in the book of Acts 1. Let's see how they, they chose. Acts 1, 15 to 26, how they did it. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the, of, into brackets, the number of names together were about 120. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spoke before concerning Judas, which was gu- uh, guide to them that took Jesus. For he was numbered with us and obtained part of this ministry. And this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity and Falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, insomuch that field is called in their proper tongue Al-Sedama, that is to say, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of the Psalms, Let his habitation be desolate, let no man dwell, dwell therein, and his bishopric let another take. So, see verse 21. Now, they are giving the qualities of an apostle. They want to choose. So, what are these qualities? And let's see. Do these people who call themselves apostles today have these qualities? Listen, verse 21. Wherefore, of these men which have accompanied us with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from baptism of John unto the same day that he was taken up from us, But one must be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. So they are saying, for you to be an apostle, you have to start from John. John the Baptist, you must have seen John Baptist. Two, resurrection of Jesus. So you have to have seen from... (laughs) From this, from John the Baptist to resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the only way you can become a, a witness, an apostle. So today's apostles, have they seen John the Baptist? Have they seen the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? Are they true or fakes? That one, you can always see that and then you understand. And then let, let, let's just see what happened when they chose uh, uh, they chose him. to Verse 23. And they appointed two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was surnamed Justus and Matthias. And they pray, uh, prayed and said, Thou Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, shew whether of these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship, from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot 
mm, fell upon Matthias and he was numbered with the 11 apostles. So it's like there was 11 apostles and then he was numbered among. It's like there was a group and then he, he, he was numbered among as the group. So does that really mean that he has been accepted? He was numbered among the group. Mm, we have to ask ourselves that question. We have to ask ourselves, if he was just numbered among the group, does it mean that he was accepted? All right. Let's keep on checking. So having not heard again about Matthias, we think probably God and another choice, that is maybe Paul, is an apostle, because we are seeing so much. Another guy comes who is called Paul. All right. We see Paul. And we see so many times, uh, Paul is men is mentioned in his apostles as, "Hey, I'm the apostle to the Gentiles." Paul, Paul, though the apostle of Jesus Christ, the apostle from Romans till Philemon, we see a lot of, "I'm the apostle, I'm the apostle," and all that. Does it mean God had a choice of Paul? We're going to see this. So. Did also Paul fulfill this uh, requirement? Yes, because Paul was a Pharisee. So definitely during the time of John the Baptist, the Pharisees were always there trying to confirm and ask John the Baptist so many questions. And also the time when Jesus was being killed here on earth and being killed, the Pharisees were there. So Paul was a Pharisee. So he also saw that. And also we see when Paul was going to Damascus and he met Jesus, so he saw him also after resurrection. So he fulfilled all this. Could that be the choice of God? Let's see. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.1 Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and sustains our brother. So already we see Paul saying, I am called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God. Mm -hmm. So this one already explains that Paul was chosen by Jesus. But Matthias might have been chosen by the apostles because, let's see, Galatians 1.1, 1, 1, it says, Paul, an apostle, into brackets, not of men, <laughs> you see, these other guys were just some guys, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. So he's saying, Paul, not chosen by man. So it means the other guy, he might have been chosen by the apostles, but it was not God, Jesus as a, a choice. So, also Paul confirms that he was the apostle chosen by God for the Gentiles. And we can confirm this one in uh, Romans Romans 11.13. He says, For I speak unto you Gentiles, inasmuch I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. So he says, I am the apostle to the Gentiles, and I magnify my office. So Paul was given the gospel. He was revealed to the gospel of our dispensation. He was told, this is the gospel. This is how people are going to be saved. It's no longer going to be the message of the kingdom of heaven. No, it's not about me as the Messiah. It's about me, what I did for you. So you see here, the message was who Jesus is. Who? It was all about who. Who is Jesus? The Messiah. But now Paul was given another message, which is the gospel. The gospel. The gospel is about what? What Jesus did. So you see there's a big difference. So the gospel is found in 1 Corinthians uh, 15, 1 through 4. All right. This is the gospel which Paul was given. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And uh, briefly, you can just check that. It's always good. I like to find somewhere where I can fit in the gospel so that somebody somewhere might not have heard the gospel all that time uh, and they can hear and maybe get saved. So the, the Bible in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, so you are saved by the gospel. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Believing in vain is believing in yourself, believing that you can save yourself by works, okay? For I deliver unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. How did Jesus die? Jesus shed his own blood. Uh, Jesus shed his blood. Okay, this is how Jesus died. So once you understand how Jesus died, 
and you believe that this death was not just in vain. It was a death so that you can be saved. You can be forgiven of your sins. So how? This is how. How Jesus died? By shedding of his blood. Without shedding, shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. Without shedding of this blood, then nobody could have been saved. So this is what saved you. The Bible says in Romans 3.25, uh, in whom God has set forth to be the propitiation, all right, through his blood. So his blood is our propitiation. The propitiation is the act of appeasing wrath. So God has appeased his wrath through Jesus Christ, his death. So if you believe that Christ died, and he did not just die for nothing, he died for our sins, he was buried, he rose again according to the scriptures. You believe this is the gospel of what Jesus did, not who Jesus is. Now you can't be saved by just saying Jesus is the Messiah. No, you have to believe in what he did and that he did it for you. So that's the gospel that uh, was given to Paul. And uh, we also see something else. Paul says that he was born an apostle out of due time. Due time is towards the end of the apostles era. That's the time that Paul was born. All right. So he was born out of due time. And we see 1 Corinthians 15, 8 through 9. It says, At last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles that I am. I am to meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. So Paul is saying, I am the least of all the apostles. The, I am least of all the apostles because I persecuted the church of God. So, and he also says, I was born out of due time. So already the time of the apostles was almost ending. But I was born towards the end, towards the end of the time, the season of the apostles. So, does it mean that uh, apostles faded out? Does it mean that, hey, we are seeing apostles fading out? You see? So, if we see this, then we also see another verse. 2 Corinthians 11.5 For I suppose I was not a wit behind the very chiefest apostles. Okay? So, after seeing this, we are seeing Paul is saying, I am very, I am the least, I am... I don't deserve even to be called an apostle. Like it was, you know, it was towards the end of the time. Then does it mean something? Are we seeing the Bible trying to tell us that apostles is like they were fading out? Are we seeing that? And as well, uh, so which, which signs accompanied the apostles? Which signs accompanied the apostles? We have to see this and ask ourselves. Are there specific signs that we can say these ones are the ones which accompanied the apostles? Already first you have seen a few, but then let's also see what the book of Mark, Mark 16, Mark 16, 15, what does it say? Uh, let's see here, Mark 15, 16, 15 to be precise. Eh? It says, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. We are seeing casting out devils. Uh huh. Uh, they shall speak with new tongues. So speaking tongues. So this one is uh, speaking tongues. I told you we'll add them here. Speak in tongues. So there are some more here. And then, again, it says, apart from speaking in tongues, uh -huh, they shall take up serpents, take up serpents, take up serpents. And then, do you have another one? Take up serpents. And then, uh -huh, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them, and they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So we see, drink poison. So we see, all these are different signs that were given. These signs were given to the apostles. They were told, all this you can be able to do. And of course, yes, they did them. And also we can even see, Paul also did all this kind of uh, things he also did them Paul did literally everything here we can just see a couple of them so we can see like for example Paul cast out devils demons in Acts 16 16 we see 
the Bible says, And it came to pass, as, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with spirit of divination met us, met us which uh, brought her masters much gain by soothsaying, blah, 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 all that. Let's see verse 18. And this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I commend... I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. So we see Paul already uh, doing this, already casting out devils. That is Paul casting out devils. We also see Paul taking up serpents in Acts 28, 3 to 6. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and uh, uh, he laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. So fastening on your hand is biting him, a viper. Verse 4, And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom, though he has escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth, suffereth not to live. Verse 5, And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. <laughs> How bad they looked when he should have fallen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said there was a God. You see, so Paul was beaten by a snake and just shook it and put it in the fire. And these people waited and to see Will this guy, uh, you know, swell, will he fall down? But when he did not, they say, oh, there must be a God. So already we see Paul was able to take up serpents. So that one he did as well. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Did Paul raise the dead? Did he raise the dead? Let's see. Acts 27 to 12. It says, And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. And there were many lights in the upper chamber, where they were gathered, where they were gathered together. And there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sank down with sleep and fell down from the third loft, <laughs> was taken up dead. So there was a young boy who, you know, Paul preached so long. And that's why sometimes it's always good. Uh, uh, there, there are have you ever gone to this Pentecostal church and they start to say, hey, now today the Holy Spirit has said this and that, and then those guys can lengthen the preaching, like two, three, four, you see? Something similar happened and someone fell down because of being tired. Let's see. Uh, that's on a light note. And, uh, and Paul, verse 10, and Paul went down and fell on him and embracing him said, trouble not yourself for the, for his life is in him. When he therefore was come up again and had broken bread and eaten and taken a long while, even till break of the day, so he departed. And they brought the young man alive and were not a little comforted. So Paul raised this boy. He fell down from the third floor because of a long preaching, because Paul was to travel the next day. So he fell down and uh, all that happened. But then... Uh, he was able to heal him. So we see already, uh, he was able to raise him, sorry. So we see Paul raising the dead. So did Paul speak in tongues? Did he speak in tongues? Let's, let's see. 1 Corinthians 14, 18. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. <laughs> so Paul already speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. Paul, did Paul heal the sick? You see, this is raising the dead. Did he heal the sick? Uh, Acts 28, 8. And it came to pass that the father of publishers lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux to whom Paul entered in and pay, prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. So we already see he healed the sick as well. All right. So uh, all that, there, there's so much. I don't, I don't know exactly where I can get a verse showing cleansing lepers and also drinking poison. So that one I can leave. But literally, as you can see, these miracles and signs, Paul could be able to do. All right? And uh, he tells us, all in all, the signs were for the apostles. So Paul even confirms these signs, they are for apostles. Let's see where he confirms that. 
2 Corinthians 12, 12. Truly, the signs of an apostle were wrought among all in patience, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. So Paul is saying these signs and wonders were for the apostles. And also Paul tells us that these signs will cease. They will end. It will reach a time that they will start ceasing. They will start ending. He, he tells us that in 1 Corinthians 13, 8. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. So if he's saying this kind of things, they will start to finish. They will start seizing, ending. And they will end when? Now when Paul was, you, you remember before Paul was, uh, uh, went fully to the Gentiles, he was still preaching to the Jews. He started actually preaching to the Jews and then transitioned and went to the Gentiles. When he was in the Jews, preaching to the Jews, he had all this power to do all these kind of things. Paul could do great and marvelous things. But when he transitioned, he started now preaching to the Gentiles, we see the signs started fading out. So he no longer had these signs. He had no power to heal anyone. He had no power to do. And we can see this. We can confirm this. <laughs> We can confirm this. As the days went by, he started his, the power he had to do these miracles ended. We can see this in 1 Timothy 5.23. Paul prescribing to Timothy a medicine instead of healing him. Listen, drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmities. So why is he telling Timothy, uh, take a little wine for the sake of your stomach? Instead of laying hands on him and heal him, he feared this power. So the power has already started fading because now he stores to the Gentiles, which is more of faith than signs. All right. We also see in 2 Timothy 4.20, Paul saying, Erastus abode at Corinth, but Trophimus have I left at Miletum sick. <laughs> so Paul is leaving someone sick. Why are you leaving someone sick and you have the power to heal them? It means... The signs have already started fading out when he has gone now to the Gentiles. So to the Gentiles, we no longer need the signs. So when you see people saying, hey, healing, healing, healing. Yes, I'm not saying Jesus cannot heal. Jesus can heal. But now he heals by faith. It's your faith which heals you. Your faith which heals you. Not some guy laying his hand on you. This time, somebody could lay his hand on you with no faith, with no nothing, and you're healed. Right now, it is your faith which heals you. Not some guy with a big crusade saying, today is a healing ministry. No, that's a lie. Those, those are liars. All right? So, Paul tells us that he truly was the last apostle after starting the church age. He tells us he, he was the last apostle. And let's confirm those words. 1 Corinthians 4, 9. Paul says, For I think that God has set forth us, the apostles, last. <laughs> he has set us forth the, us, the apostles, last, as it were appointed unto death. So once we die, game over. For we are made a spectacle uh -huh, unto the world and to angels and unto men. So he's saying, we are the last witnesses. So if... Paul and his team of apostles, they were the last witnesses. Once they die, that's the end. Then who are you trying to call yourself apostle? Why are you calling yourself an apostle? Are you among us the team of Paul? And are you, have, have you witnessed John ba the Baptist? Have you witnessed Jesus' death and burial and resurrection? Have you witnessed these things? So this, these are a bunch of fakes. They are a bunch of fakes. They're only telling you that, hey, we are apostles, but they are not. They are liars. So Paul tells us when they, Paul also tells us when they leave, he says, <laughs> when we leave, eh, some other fakes will come and start deceiving people. Let's see 2 Corinthians eleven thirteen. It says, 13 to 15, for such are, uh, are false apostles. People will start coming and saying that they are the apostle after they have left. He's saying, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into an angel of light. <laughs> Verse 14, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. 
So he's saying, after we leave, some other guys will come here and say, I'm apostle this, I'm apostle that, I'm apostle this. And they'll be only deceivers, deceitful people. They want to deceive you off your hard earned money and telling you that they can sell you miracles. Those are liars. There's nothing like that. All right. Also, Apostle John in Revelation, he also affirms the same that false apostles or deceivers will also rise during the time of the end. In Revelation 2 2, it says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and how thou has not uh, thou cannot bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles <laughs> and are not and has found them liars so john is also saying you have he's talking to this church and saying you know you have tried all these guys who call themselves apostles and you have found them liars why because they are no longer apostles apostles have ended and uh, so some people might, uh, might ask, what about the healing miracles that we see on TV today, supposedly happening in churches, in TV, healing miracles, healing that, healing that? Uh, remember one thing, right now we are living at the time of apostasy. Apostasy is the great falling away, people falling away from the truth and starting to believe and talk about great things which are not. You see, they are lying and deceiving people to, to believe in them, and which is not true. So we see we are living at the time of apostasy. Apostasy. And the Bible tells us in 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 to 10, it says, Even him who is coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in all that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. So he's saying, in these last times, you will see so many people coming up with power and signs and lying wonders, but they are from Satan. Satan is giving them the power. So when you see these people trying to say, hey, you see, I can do this, I can do this, you must be very careful with such kind of people. You have to be very careful. So when you see people claiming to do these miracles, be, be extremely cautious with them, especially if they are not Jews, <laughs> and they are not doing it to the Jews because signs were for the Jews and they were given to the Jews who are apostles who are Jews. So if somebody calls himself apostle with all these miracles and is not a Jew, then be extremely even more careful. Because we see Satan also will deceive many using signs and fake miracles. Some will even be so much looking real that you'll even be deceived. Revelation 11, Revelation 13, uh, 11 to 14, it says, And I beheld another beast coming out, up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and causes the earth and them which dwell there, in to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. You see, the beast will be able even to heal. It will be able to heal. Okay, so you'll think this is a, a godly healing, but the beast also has power to heal. Verse 13 And he does great wonders, he did great, he will do great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Just imagine, I've seen this. Uh, this one guy here who preaches a lot in Kenya, I don't want to mention his, his name. He has so big crusades and sometimes he says we have seen things in the sky. You know, they are coming down. We see like um, people are, they even wash the, you know, people try to wash the, 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 the tarmac road with soap and water because he's passing by. He calls himself so great man. You see all those kind of things. Be really careful about this kind of people because the Bible says, and he does great wonders. He can even make fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Everybody watching, wow, that is fire. Oh, take videos, take videos. Be careful. Verse 14, and he deceived them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beasts and so forth. So we also see as well the spirits of devils Work miracles as well. Revelation 16, 13 to 14. And I saw 
Three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and, and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles. You see? Miracles. The devils will work miracles in the last days. So don't be deceived by these fellows with their miracles. You have to discern every spirit. The Bible says discern every spirit. Don't just wake up and... Th- this was... This signs were for the Jews. Right now, it's all about faith. Have faith. Just pray to God. God, I'm feeling headache. Please heal me. And have faith. And he will heal you. But don't go to some guy to come and, uh, you know, lay hands on you and do all those kind of things. Because you might be deceived. You may be deceived. Listen this. Uh, where was I even reading? Revelation 16, 13 to 14. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beasts and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and to the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. That is the day, the battle of Armageddon. Armageddon, all right? So if we see already unclean spirits working miracles and all those kind of things, could these guys who call themselves apostles right now be fakes? Maybe, probably, if someone says today is an apostle, probably uh, he might have uh, either he is deceived or he might have he might be deceiving people. He might be deceived himself or he might be deceiving people. And, uh, or maybe, I, I don't know, or just a liar or something. Because you have to be very careful about people who call themselves this name. Because the Bible is very clear. Very, very clear. And it has told us. And also, maybe just as I wind up, God himself remembers and honors only 12 apostles during the, the millennial kingdom. He will honor only 12 and remember only 12. Let's see. Revelation 21, 12, uh, 21 verse 14. The Bible says this. And the wall of the city, that is the new Jerusalem, had 12 foundations. In, ne- in them, the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. So if in the new Jerusalem, only God honors 12 apostles, are you seeing the sense that where are you if you are an apostle? Are you honored here? Why is God not remembering or saying there were 15, 20, 30, 40 million apostles or something in the world who were? It's because the apostles faded. God only remembers the 12 apostles. Who are the 12 foundations? Were you a foundation of the church age? Did you lay any foundation of the church age? No. So if you did not, then you're not an apostle. And actually there are 12 because it seems God did not accept Matthias. Most probably, he replaced Paul. He said, okay, I have a choice. My choice is Apostle Paul. Or maybe there are 13 apostles. Or may- I don't know. It, it all depends with how you get the message. But what I'm saying is, from the look of things, I don't think uh, all these people who say they're apostles, they are. Be careful about them. And I think that message has been able to open up your mind in one way or another. You are able to learn and understand. And... Uh, I hope it will be a blessing to you and also you can share it to other people that they can also understand and learn. So God bless you. Thank you very much and have a great time.